You know how it is, right? A question pops into your head and for most of us, what we do is go online and type that question into a search engine. More often than not these days, that search engine is Google. In fact, Google is so massive and can see so much that it can provide anyone with a good idea of what is trending right now. And scientists are now investigating whether searches for particular medical problems could be used to predict a second spike in cases of COVID-19. In the UK, searches for loss of taste and smell were peaking before the lockdown and long before those symptoms were announced as being linked to the disease. So our, our models that we have developed uh, using online search data uh, were peaking about 17 days before uh, confirmed cases uh, were of COVID-19 were peaking in uh, eight countries that we have analyzed. Uh, and therefore, based, based on this observation, we, we thought that if this is to, to, to happen again, we may get an early warning based on online searches. But trying to unlock what search tells us about the progress of a disease is much more complex than just finding out what the most popular search terms are. For example, there was a second peak of searches for loss of taste and smell, but that was after they were announced as official symptoms. Dr. Lampos analysed thousands of search terms and found that it's not just the obvious ones that can be used to spot outbreaks. And it's not even the most obvious people who are able to spot them. Patrick Berlinket is not a researcher. He's a marketeer. And he doesn't use the Google Trends tool. He uses something that's even more powerful. Google Ads. So in the last 7 to 14 days, there's been an increase in positive case rates in the Sunbelt states in the United States. Arizona, I've seen a 400% increase in anosmia search terms. South Carolina, I'm seeing a 300% increase. Uh, on the other hand, there's been a drop in the last 7 to 14 days in Michigan. The correlation is exact between the increases and the decreases that have happened. So right now, what is your research telling you about where we might see an increase in cases next? So one area that stands out is definitely Houston, where I'm seeing a 3x uh, increase in search volume for anosmia starting June 1st. Is there a strong chance people are just searching for those symptoms because they've heard about it in the news rather than they've got it themselves? So I can see the word for word searches that uh, do correlate with the keyword. People are literally entering terms like, I can't smell since Tuesday, what do I do? Uh, I lost my sense of taste and smell, what does that mean? You know, I see those kind of searches. I don't see anything that would tell me that these searchers know what anosmia is, they've heard it in the news. And there are some parts of the world where there's very little official health data available, where search data is flagging up some interesting anomalies. Tanzania, where John Magafuli, the president, is one of the few leaders around the world who is still denying the seriousness of COVID by analysing searches for loss of smell symptoms. We're able to form a strong hypothesis that actually there are many more cases of COVID in Tanzania than the official statistics from John Magafuli's government are suggesting. And in fact, search engine analysis has even suggested which government measures may have had the greatest impact on the outbreak. We see that, for example, the social distancing measures, as well as the lockdowns that followed uh, them in, in most countries, were effective. And in some countries, we also see that social distancing measures alone would have been effective. So we see that there was a, the, the, the trend was in decline be, a little bit before, like one or two days before the application of lockdowns. So one would argue that maybe severe lockdowns were not necessarily the best uh, course of action. But again, we cannot be sure about that. 
Public Health England now includes UCL's findings in their response to COVID-19. It is important to remember though that this is relatively new research with the potential to get it wrong. But when it's used with more conventional methods, it's looking like it can be a powerful tool.